Hey, this is Matthew with Another World Terraria. Welcome to part 3 of my tutorial series on how to grow Immerse Bucephalandra like a boss. In this video, I'm going to share information with you about substrate and fertilizer. By the way, if you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, go ahead and watch those before this one. I have a playlist you can check out. Although there are many substrates you could use for Boosie, I'm only going to talk about the two which I've personally used and that have worked well for me. The two substrates are Fluval Stratum and Lava Rock. Fluval Stratum is a mineral rich volcanic soil in the form of rounded pellets about an eighth of an inch in diameter on average. You can buy it from many places online, usually the bigger bags will save you money in the long run. The stratum seems to have enough nutrients in it to support relatively good plant growth, even without fertilizer. That said, fertilizer definitely makes a huge difference, so I'm going to cover that later in this video. For most of my bins, I use stratum as the base substrate, about 1 inch deep, and a shallow top dressing of lava rock. The lava rock I use is half inch diameter, maroon color, from Bonsai Jack. The lava rock isn't required, but I've noticed a few benefits from it. Number 1. I haven't done a controlled experiment to confirm this scientifically, but it seems to me that most Boosie grow better with lava rock versus without lava rock. Number 2. It seems that the super tiny species of Boosie do better when raised up slightly on the rock as opposed to being directly on the fluval and more in water. Number 3. The lava rock, if kept above the water level, helps reduce algae and slime mold on the surface of the substrate. And number four, the lava rock contrasts really well with the plants, so it makes them stand out and look super nice. The next section of this video is a bonus topic which I consider as a supplement to the substrate. It's infrequently used or discussed, and I consider it kind of a secret weapon to growing plants really well. Let's talk about microfauna. Microfauna are optional, but I highly recommend them. In this case, I'm referring to something called springtails. They're in a group of animals called hexapods, and although they look very much like insects, they're no longer in that classification. Springtails are beneficial because they feed on decaying matter, which helps prevent mold and other issues. Overall, they keep things clean and healthy. Springtails, sometimes referred to as springs, thrive in humid environments, which is ideal because those are the conditions where they're most useful and those are the conditions where Bucephalandra grow. High humidity and moisture tend to result in mold and other things that you don't want cropping up, and that's what springtails like to feed on. I use various different species, the larger white ones and the small silver, gray, and black ones. There are a few different ways you can get springtails. You can buy cultures online. You can collect them from outside, and if you grow indoor plants or have terrariums or vivariums, you probably already have springtails since they're just about everywhere. Here's how I use springtails. I always keep a number of cultures going, so I have plenty of springs for use in different bins. To add them to the bin, I just pour the desired amount in. There isn't any way to measure them, so I just go by gut instinct. You can also experiment with adding leaf litter to your bins. Leaf litter is dried and sterilized tree leaves which are added on top of the substrate. The leaf litter provides hiding places and a bit of extra food to sustain populations of springtails when there isn't much mold present. Personally, I think the leaf litter makes the plants grow better, but I can't prove that definitively. I don't always use leaf litter in my boosy bins, but I do use it in all of my other bins with tropical plants such as ferns. I have been using leaf litter more in my latest boosy bins. I use willow oak leaves, which are relatively small and narrow compared to most of the other leaves that are commonly sold for leaf litter. Now let's talk about fertilizer. The only fert I use for Boosie is Osmocote Plus, outdoor and indoor, and the formula is 15-9-12. Here are some of the reasons why I love Osmocote Plus. First and foremost, it works very well. Plants grow super healthy and look incredible. Second reason is that it's slow release. It doesn't have to be applied very often, you can just dose it and forget it. Third reason is it's gentle. Even though the fertilizer does pack a punch, the formula and the slow release feature ensure that sensitive plants aren't harmed. And the fourth reason is that it can be placed exactly where it's needed. You can insert the pellets with precision using tweezers. Here's how I use Osmocote. I just use tweezers to grab a pellet and then I insert it near the plant's roots below the surface of the substrate. The two benefits of this method are one, the fertilizer is in the most ideal location for the plants to uptake it, and number two, the nutrients are away from the surface where the light is, reducing the chance of excess algal growth. 
As far as dosage, I'd suggest starting with less fertilizer than you think you need and then wait and see what happens. It's better to slightly under fertilize and then add more in the future than to over fertilize and cause problems like excess algae, plant burn, and so on. I don't measure a specific amount of fertilizer. If I had to estimate, I'd say I use about 3 or 4 pellets in a 5 square inch area. As a general rule, the smaller the species is, the less fert I use. So for tiny clumps of super micro species, I usually only use one pellet. Regarding frequency of fertilization, the Osmocote Plus packaging says it feeds for 6 months, and I'd say that's probably pretty reasonable. It does depend on how wet the substrate is in each bin though. The wetter it is, and the more often you water, the faster the pellets are going to dissolve. I judge when more ferts are needed based on how the plants appear and how they're growing. If growth slows down a bit or the plants just don't look as nice, and it's been at least a few months since fertilizing, then it might be time to apply more fert.